Hello everyone, this is the part two of the CRISPR uh, videos. Um, in, part one, in part one, I spoke about uh, cr the CRISPR system. So if you didn't watch part one, I highly recommend you to go watch it. Because um, in part one, I'm speaking uh, in details about the CAS, uh, CRISPR CAS system. And in this video, I'm going to um, I'm going to speak about the utilization of CRISPR-Cas9 technique in gene engineering and gene knocking out. So what is, how, how can we, how can we perform gene knocking out using CRISPR-Cas9 technique? Let's say we have a mouse. Uh, first, you should know that the mouse is is a diploid. It can it has uh, forty chromosomes uh, and twenty pairs of chromosomes. So it's very similar to human, but humans have, as you know, forty six chromosomes, so twenty three pairs of them. Now, in the embryonic stage, when the when the mouse is still an, an embryo, there is something called the embryoblast, and this is called the blastocyst cavity. This um, now these cells, the embryonic cells in, in, during the embry embryo development, are called embryonic stem cells, and they are pluripotent stem cells. So first of all, they are active cells. They are very active because they are young cells. Uh, they can proliferate very actively, and then second, they are pluripotent stem cells. What does that mean? It, that, uh, it, it means that these cells are not differentiated and it can be differentiated to any other type of cells in the body. So we can use these cells, we can differi differentiate them into, um, into neurons, into hepatocells or any other type of cells in the body. So in the body. So this is what pluripotent stem cells mean. Now, what we can do is that we can take uh, one embryonic stem cell of these and culture it in an embryo, culture it in a petri dish to get many embryonic stem cells. Now, inside the cells, there there are the mice genome. There is the mice genome. Uh, let's say let's say that this is the mouse DNA. So this is three prime, five prime, five prime, three prime. And then we have a specific gene, let's call it gene one. We want to knock it out. We don't want this gene, maybe because it's uh, like a, it's causing certain disease. So we don't want this gene. We want to knock it out. You should know that there, were, there will be another copy of this chromosome because as we said, it's a diploid cell and there is two copies of, so, so there are there are pairs of chromosomes so each chromosome will have will have another pair of it copy of it so how can we knock out this gene the answer is by using crispr cas9 technique now in order to knock out this gene, as, as we said in the previous video, we need something called the CRISPR RNA. The CRISPR RNA is a piece of RNA that contains a piece of uh, the CRISPR repeat and the, and the complementary piece to this strand, to the lower strand, which we call the coding strand in the first video. So we should have this piece of RNA, we should design it or we can buy it. So we should know that we need to knock out this gene and we should design a piece of RNA which is exactly complementary to the lower strand of DNA. Now what we should do is we should use type 2. If you remember in the first video I told you that type 2 of CRISPR system is the most important. Why? Because it's the type used for gene engineering type 2. So we have these embryonic stem cells. We want to knock out a certain gene. So what, what we should have is, first of all, the CRISPR RNA. Second, we should have the tracer RNA. If you remember, in the previous video, I told you that in type 2, there is something called the tracer RNA, the transactivating CRISPR RNA. And we should have also the Cas9 enzyme and something called the DNA repair template. I'm going to 
to speak about it later. You you will know later why should why we should have this DNA. The question is how can we deliver all of these into the embryonic cell? We should find a way to deliver all of these components into the embryonic cell. Actually, scientists have found a brilliant way to, to deliver all of these together at once into the embryonic stem cells. And this is an, so they simply designed a plasmid. This plasmid is a, is a piece of DNA, it's a plasmid, and it contains pieces that can be transcribed to every component of these. So we have we can have several uh, repeats of CRISPR RNAs. So we have here here I added two two repeat two sequences of CRISPR RNA that contains the uh, complementary sequ or here we have the exact sequence of gene one and here we have gene one and here, here we have the CRISPR sequence. We have a piece that can be transcribed into the tracer RNA, and we have a piece that can transcribe and translate it into the Cas9 enzyme. And we have a piece that is the DNA repair template. I'm going to, I'm going to speak about it later. So what we, what we do is that we take this plasmid and we incubate it into with uh, so we incubate it with the uh, embryonic stem cell stem cells in order to deliver this plasmid into the embryonic stem cells the delivery can take place by two ways first is electro uh, which um, the electroporation depends on like an electrical way in and it's an electrical technique used to increase the permeability of the um, the permeability of the cells, so the plasmid can enter the cell easily. Or using vectors like viruses, lentivirus, adenovirus, or other types of viruses that can also deliver the plasmid into the embryonic cells. Now let's see it in a bigger way. So let's see this is the let's say this is the plasmid, this is the embryonic cell, and then the plasmid is develop, uh, uh, delivered into the embryonic stem cells. Stem cell. Once the plasmid is inside the embryonic stem cell, it will it will be transcribed into the different components we need for the CRISPR-Cas9 technique. So first we have the CRISPR RNA. We have the tracer RNA, we have the Cas9 protein, and we have the DNA template used for DNA repair. What's going to happen is that the Cas9 with the tracer RNA and the CRISPR RNA are going to form the CRISPR-Cas9 complex, like this. We, it's the same what we saw in the, pres in the first video. Now what's going to happen is that here we have gene one. Here we have the CRISPR-Cas9 complex. Um, so this RNA sequence is going to recognize gene one. The specificity here depends on two uh, on two things. As I told you in the first video, type two CRISPR system depends on two things. So first is the target sequence. So the CRISPR RNA, this sequence is complementary to this sequence, so it's going to recognize it. And second is the PAM sequence. As I told you in the previous video, in the first video, there is a very important sequence uh, called the PAM sequence. Uh, it was important in type one and two in, of CRISPR system, but not in type three, if you remember. Now the Ca the, the importance of PAM sequence is that the PAM sequence can be recognized by the Cas9 enzyme, and then it increases the specificity of the recognition. Now, the, the question you may ask here is why, so why if we, ha you, if, if we have gene one and then the adjacent sequence is, is not recognizable by Cas by Cas9. The answer here is that we have many forms of Cas9, so we can modify the Cas9 in order to recognize the PAM sequence. 
because when we know our gene we know our we know the pam of it which is the adjacent uh, motive and then we can modify our cas9 uh, enzyme in order to recognize the pam sequence now what happens if that as i told you the target sequence is recognized by the RNA sequence here. The PAM sequence is recognized by the Cas9 enzyme. And then, yeah, this, the, so the gene should be not more than 20 base pairs. So now, the, uh, the RNA sequence will bind to its complementary <clears throat> sequence on the lower strand of DNA. And the Cas9 will use uh, its special domains we, we, we talked about in the first video in order to undergo something we call double strand break. So it will break the two strands on the same place. So Cas9 can, can do a double strand break or single strand break. So single strand break is to break each strand separately. What's going to happen here is a break into inside the gene one. So normally what the cell do uh, in this case is that the cell will try to repair this break. Uh, there are two, two ways of uh, genetic repairs. If the first, if we have blunt ends, blunt ends are like this. So the two strands will be cut at the, exactly at the same place. And this happens when Cas9 undergoes a double strand break. So the two, the two strands will be cut exactly at the same place. And here we get blunt ends. In this way, in this, in this case, the cell will undergo something called homologous direct repair. So the cell will uh, basically link the two strands together and um, and it like it will uh, repair this break easily. Or in other case, if the Cas9 undergoes a um, single strand break, so if Cas9 breaks the first strand and then it breaks the second strand, then the two strands will be like this. We call them sticky ends. In this case, we have something called non-homologous end joining. I'm going to speak about this. So in order to prevent uh, DNA repair, so the thing is that we don't want uh, this repair. We don't want the cell to repair this break because if the cell repairs this break, then we lose everything. But we don't want gene, gene one. And because of this, we use what we call DNA repair, DNA repair uh, template because this template is going to prevent the cell from repairing this break. Um, how in case of blunt ends, so in case of homolo homologous direct repair, what's going to happen is that this DNA is going to go and remove the rest of the of the gene one and bind instead of it. So DNA is going to bind directly to the strand of DNA. So th the rest of gene one will be removed and then DNA is going to bind to the DNA. The DNA template is going to uh, bind to the break to the broken sequence. Uh, for you for this we use ligase. Um, then what's going to happen is that uh, the rest of the gene one is going to be degraded. And this strand is going to be like linked with the DNA template. So basically what, what we did is that we removed gene one and we added the DNA repair template instead of it. <clears throat> In case of sticky ends, it's, a bit more complicated. So what's going to happen is that, so here we have three prime, five prime, and here we have five prime, three prime. Now you know that usually DNA synthesis takes place from five prime to three, to three prime. So in this 
direction. So what's going to happen is that the other th the other strand will be chopped up like this, and this strand in we in which uh, the three prime uh, the three prime end face the break is going to invade the DNA template, DNA repair template. This is, this is what we call DNA invasion. So it's going to invade the DNA template and it's going to be copied according to the DNA repair template like this. <clears throat> What's going to happen then is that this piece is going to go back and then the rest of the gene one is going to be chopped up. The two strands will be bound together using uh, DNA ligase. And then, so the rest of gene one will be chopped up. And then uh, this gap here will, will going to be uh, filled from five prime to three prime. Always DNA synthesis take place from five prime to three prime uh, using DNA polymerase. So here it is. What we did is that we removed gene one and we added the DNA, uh, the DNA repair template instead of it. So this is what we call gene knocking out. Uh, this was everything I wanted to tell you about CRISPR system and the CRISPR-Cas9 technique, gene knocking out. I hope you enjoyed these two videos. Uh, you can also uh, watch several videos, you can subscribe the channel, you can write uh, any question in the comments or any um, suggestion. Um, and see you, don't, don't forget to subscribe, subscribe the channel because there will be many other interesting videos. And see you in the next video. Bye!